Introduction to Portable Appliance Testing What is a Portable Electrical Appliance? According to the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, a Portable Electric Appliance, PAP, is, any item that can be moved, either connected or disconnected from an electrical supply. Almost all portable, that is, movable, appliances have a cable or lead and a plug. Portable and movable equipment includes the following. Electrical equipment which is relatively easy to move around, such as kettles, vacuum cleaners, floor polishers, portable heaters, electric fans, lamps, radios, microwave ovens, small electric cookers, laptops, computer and film projectors, irons, hair dryers, food mixers and toasters. Larger items such as water coolers, fridges, photocopiers and fax machines, vending machines, washing machines and dryers, electric cookers and computers. Handheld items that do not have a plug but are fixed or wired in are considered to be portable appliances. A good example can be the hair dryer. However, larger electrical items such as wired in boilers and heaters are not. Battery charging equipment that is plugged into the mains, such as mobile phone chargers, are included, but not the phones themselves. Extension leads to multiple adapters and connection lead. What are the risks? The main hazards of working with electricity are Electric shock Burns from human contact with live parts Injury from exposure to arcing Fire from faulty electrical equipment or installations Explosions caused by poorly maintained electrical apparatus or static electricity igniting flammable materials, vapor or dust. Electric shocks can also cause other types of injury, such as when a person falls from a ladder or scaffolding. Risk can also come from obstructive or poorly laid out leads, cables and wires, though these tend to be considered as part of general workplace health and safety rather than specifically electrical problems. However, always report cables and wires that appear to be in a hazardous or risky position. Understanding Shock Risk All who are involved with electrical systems are termed duty holders by the law. A good understanding of the dangers and effects of electric shock is necessary for those employees and workers who only have limited knowledge of electricity but are still charged with their company's appliance testing. It will help give meaning and confidence to the inspection and PAT process. Electric shock Electric shock is the term used to describe the passage of electric current through the body in such magnitude as to have harmful effects, which can be extremely damaging and life-threatening. The effects of current passing through the human body, which originated from different amplitudes can be summarized as follows, Ma equals milliampers or milliamps. 1 to 2 milliampers, barely perceptible. 5 to 10 milliampers, the subjected individual will be thrown away from the appliance and will experience pain. 10 to 15 milliampers, the person will experience muscular contraction and won't be able to let go of the equipment. 20 to 30 milliampers, breathing is impaired. More than 15 milliampers, may experience a heart attack and death. A little about risk assessment. The control of risk arising from the use of portable electrical equipment should be based on a risk assessment. A risk assessment identifies hazards and institutes appropriate mitigation and measures to control risk in the workplace, often partly by setting up an appropriate maintenance plan. There will be more on risk assessment later in the course. Legislation While there is currently no absolute legal requirement for PAT testing, the government has produced regulations which govern the maintenance of electrical appliances. The most effective way for employers to conform to these regulations is by PAT testing. The HSE expects you to perform PAT testing to ensure that you are compliant with the appropriate regulations. Insurance companies also expect compliance to validate their policies fully. Several published regulations that have been implemented are the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, HSWA. The Management of the Health and Safety at Work Act Regulations 1999. The Provision and Use of Work Equipment Regulations 1998. The Electricity at Work Regulations 1989, EWR.